extends far beyond Hinduism. Mm -hmm. Do you think that somebody who's Christian, someone who's Muslim, someone who's Jewish should similarly accept that principle? Or do you think that there are barriers to that that yes. make it uniquely Hindu? Very good. There's a principle I have called history centrism. Mm -hmm. History centrism is, a, is the reason for this blockage. History centrism says that because there is an infinite gap between the creator and the created, creator is external, aloof, the created us. Therefore, I don't have the innate capacity to know creators, to have the consciousness of the creator. Uh, only the idea that says Brahman has Rajiv gives Rajiv the capacity to discover Brahman, be Brahman, because ultimately actually he is. So, but a, a, a tradition where creation is ex nihilo and God is separate from the world, the only way God can be known by a man is through prophets. Because that's the purpose of the Sort of an intermediary. Intermediary. It's top down. So God chooses the prophet and says, give him this message. And then if they didn't get it, he sends another one. And then he sends another one. And then he may incarnate himself as a son and say, this is, you know, I, I'll do the job directly. So the prophet lineages are what I'm calling history-centric, history centrism, because there's a dependence on history. So it means that Joshua and Rajiv, if we are using if we are using that methodology, the methodology of seeing God as an infinite other and we have to get to know him, then the only methodology applicable to us is to go through the historical revelations made through the prophets. And since these prophets are dead, gone, their history is recorded in churches and synagogues and mosques, their historical societies in a sense. They are historical societies. The Western religions, the Abrahamic religions are in fact historical societies. And so they are preserving history of events. And these, these histories are my only recourse to the truth. Because I, I don't have direct access. There is no website I could go www.god.com and find out. So, because the revelation given to Jesus or to Moses or to Muhammad or, or these different prophets are once in a time, uh, once upon a time, and then happened, and they're not happening to me; they're not available anymore. So, I'm a, I'm basically in bondage to a certain historical account, a historical record, which certain human beings claim to have have and transmit to me. So, this means that each of the Abrahamic religions is basically defined by a certain account of history which is its Articles of Incorporation, if you will. So that's the that, Constitution. That is the Constitution. Now, where they differ in trivial matters, they can reconcile. But where they differ in such a serious way that the truth of one will falsify the other, they will not have war. Because the truth of one requires falsifying the other. So you see, for example, Christianity uh, requires, the Christian thesis requires that God, uh, Jesus is not just another prophet but the Son of God. Because what he has done could only happen if God himself comes to save redemption for all of humanity. It, will, it would not be possible with just another regular prophet. It would have to be Son of God. So if you tell Christians that we are willing to accept Jesus as a wise man and a great yogi and a uh, you know, good prophet but not a Son of God, that's offensive because that undermines Christianity. So, on the other hand, to a Muslim, a son of God would not be possible to supersede but with a regular prophet. A regular prophet would not be able to supersede son of God claims. So, to have legitimacy on their side, they can say we respect Jesus as one of the greatest prophets, but we don't accept him as son of God. So, this is an example of so rejecting specific claims that each has made. And those claims are central to that other belief structure. So, so if, you, if you look at the Islamic uh, Jewish fight over the, the dome where the, there's a sacred dome, Alexa Mas, yeah. where, where there's a rival claim. That is a particular, uh, according to the Jewish tradition, something that, that, that uh, the kingdom of Israel has to be restored. And that is, there is some very sacred event that happened there which has to be restored to with the Temple of David or something like that, right? Am I right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Whereas in the history centrism of the Islamic uh, narrative, uh, that is from where uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad went to heaven. 
Now, if one history is valid, if, if you take sides with either one history, then it compels you to take action, which is totally devastating to the other side. So it's a clash of histories. The modern clash is a, uh, that the world is, com uh, is f uh, facing is a clash of competing and mutually contradicting histories. This is, this is the result of a history-centric pattern of uh, knowing the truth. And the Dharmic alternative is that history of Rajiv and father and ancestor and bloodline is irrelevant. And I, I, I don't care what those guys did. My ancestors may be horrible guys, but what does it have to do with me? I am Brahman as Rajiv. And I'm going to awaken that consciousness. And I'm going to live by that. And therefore, whatever my biological ancestors may have done to your biological ancestors is actually irrelevant to us. I'd like to push back. Okay, so this is coming from uh, definitely a Jewish standpoint. Mm -hmm. sure. And the first premise that I disagree with, but maybe is not nearly as exciting for conversation, um, is that I think that Jews and a lot of other Abrahamic uh, ad adherents to other Abrahamic traditions do think they can directly communicate with God. Okay. And they think that prophets had sort of a special or broader or deeper relationship, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure that many would buy into the exclusivity of that type of communication. But the, the, the area that I find both, both most interesting and most challenging is that I feel like in a sense you're challenging then all three Abrahamic traditions, which you say are sort of uh, historically centered, almost historically tied down, right. by saying that history is the wrong question or history yes. is irrelevant. Yes. Do you think that the Abrahamic traditions are willing to let go of history or do you think that your claim will merely be another strand of the disagreement that you already see existing between the other well, traditions? Is, this is a very important question you raised. I'm glad you raised this question because this is what I've been dealing with for many years of my life. So first of all, uh, I, I want to address both your points. The first point that in the Abrahamic religions they do have mystical experiences and they do have prophetic experiences is true, but not enough to topple the institutionalized account of history. Mm -hmm. So while there are mystics in Christianity, the, the lineage that prevailed in power is the, is the history-centric lineage of the church. And that's why they had to get rid of these mystics as troublemakers and persecute some of them. Because it was, it was going, going against the central, central account. Is yes. The yes. yes. So history centrism is a certain power structure which says you, the individual, are not able to do it on your own. Maybe it's theoretically possible. It's very dangerous. You may end up satanic or doing something wrong. So you better not try it. I, the keeper of the history, have the access to the keys for you. So you therefore come to me and that gives them power and control over people. So not that the Western traditions didn't have rishis and gurus and, and uh, yogic exemplars who had all these great consciousness experiences. They were there, uh, uh, but they were undermined by very powerful institutions. So somehow the institutionalized religion ran antithetical and still runs antithetical to the true mysticism and the true spiritual traditions that every human being, every community has. So I think it is not that something is different about the Abrahamic religion or about the Western people, but the Abrahamic religions becoming overly institutionalized had a tendency to, to suppress and repress these tendencies that exist in the Dharma tradition, which also exist today. So that's my sense of it. So uh, one of the things I mentioned in this Holy Spirit article to differentiate it from Shakti is, is there are books written on how people who have this Kundalini type experience in the West are considered psychiatric patients. Mm -hmm. And some are considered, the theory, that's a scientific explanation, and, and a friend of mine who's a disembodiment or something like that. They have, there's, a, there's something called Qigong syndrome mm -hmm. in, the, in the psychiatric book of syndromes. There's something called Qigong syndrome, which is Kundalini type experience. And they are describing that you, if this can happen, and that's called a syndrome. So it's a psychiatric condition, and you could be put away for you know, into an asylum for claiming that you have this experience, which to a Hindu is a nightmare. That he's, 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 his Kundalini is rising and he's going through this shaking, moving, all that stuff. And that's where, maybe where the Quakers and Shakers got their name from, because maybe they're having these kind of experiences. The, uh, the, uh, 
by the biblical explanation, not the medical one, but the biblical explanation has often been that this is satanic or that you, you have some evil spirits that are... The person is possessed. So there is some external force that, that is possessed around the person of their essence. Correct. So the point I'm making is that these, the, the idea of self-realization and self-enlightenment and this very do-it-yourself spirituality that Hinduism and Buddhism have, less dependence or non-dependence on an institution, institutional authority, this is because of a lack of dependence on historicity. If history were important, to, for my salvation, then I would go to a reliable history society. I would because I was I don't remember. I wasn't present 2,000 years ago, so I'd have to go to a church. I'd have to go to somebody who I trust for their account of history. I would become dependent on them, and being dependent on them for getting me out of my predicament using an account, idea of history which they claim to have, and that, you know, is that would lead me into a an, on the Abrahamic traditions. Whereas if I'm into the Dharma tradition. I'm looking for a spiritual master who has had a living experience of expanded consciousness who can teach me to have the same. So in other words, for a Hindu, Jesus is someone we can accept as a living enlightened being who had all these experiences. The only difference is we would say that we all have that potential in us to become Jesus. That's a different, that's the difference. So it's in a certain way more universal in the way that you see it. Yes, everyone can have that. And, and uh, Prophet Muhammad had great revelations because even though in that particular life he hasn't, he hadn't, uh, he wasn't very learned and he wasn't uh, a scholar and he hadn't done great yoga, but because of reincarnation, he may have been the reincarnation of a great master, of a great yogi, and so unknown to him, he had these prior conditionings and prior tendencies drawn into him, and so he had these huge expansive. And we have no problem uh, accepting and respecting that, except we cannot say it's final and it's the only one. We have to say that I could have that too. And so, you know, there is this Ahmadiyya sect of Muslims. Now, they claim that uh, an Indian was another prophet. That it's a Muslim sect, Shiite, and they are persecuted in Islam. In, in Sunni and Shiite Islam, Ahmadiyyas are banned from being called Muslims. So if you are an Ahmadiyya, you cannot say I'm a Muslim as an Ahmadiyya because you are actually uh, an apostate. You know, you are a kind of country violating the thing. And the reason you are violating it, it, and committing blasphemy is that you are denying the claim that Muhammad was the final prophet by postulating a new prophet. So this is history-centrism problem.